Hello, this is Sarah Meehan with Concentris, bringing you a short and sweet tip for adding dynamic values to your custom fields using saved searches. So this is particularly helpful when you have a value that you want to calculate, like the number of total items, which is the exact scenario we'll be walking through on this demo. Um, or if you're looking for total cost or things like that, any sort of um, calculated value that you would want to display on a transaction. So looking here, I have a field called total item quantity that I have created. It's a custom field and I've exposed it on my sales order, but I haven't actually put any logic into it yet. So I'm going to build a saved search to actually calculate this value. So I'm going to start by building my saved search. And it's important to note that you have to have the saved search constructed as the same record type as the record that you will be placing the field on. So in this case, it is a transaction field because we're looking at a sales order. So I need to make sure that my saved search type is a transaction search. So let me go down here, select transaction. And then my criteria is going to be very simple. I don't want to look at some, uh, so now that my saved search has loaded, I'm gonna set up the criteria, which is very simple. Um, I basically just want to take a look at the line items. So not any sort of shipping items or tax items that would inflate the total artificially. And I'm going to give it a name. So let's call this total item quantity. just to align with my field name. And I'm going to make this public. This is important because otherwise users won't be able to run it and it may result in an error. So as I said, I want shipping line to be false and tax line to be false. And then I'm going to remove all fields except for, I want quantity, which will source the line item quantity, and I want the sum of that value. So right now it looks a little bit strange because I'm, I'm not really limiting this in any way, but I'm going to add a filter for internal ID. And I can show it in the filter region, but since this is gonna be happening in the background, um, that's not going to really impact me. So let me save and run, and let's take a look at this. So right now, it is giving me the total quantity for all items across all transactions. So it's giving me a, a very large value, um, and that's fine. That's exactly what I expected to see because I didn't actually build any criteria to restrict that. The filter that I selected of internal ID is gonna run that logic for me in the back end. So jumping to my transaction fields, I am going to edit the total item quantity field that I created. And you'll notice that it is a non-stored field. That is what allows it to source the field value dynamically from the saved search. So you'll definitely wanna leave this unchecked. And then on validation and defaulting, under searches, I'm going to find my search. So you'll notice I only have a couple of searches here. That's because only a couple of searches have the required item, uh, required search type and the required configuration of adding the internal ID. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save and edit just in case we need to come back to this. And I'm gonna go back to a sales order that I have open. So this is the one we looked at it a moment ago. I have a few lines here. So I have three different lines, a total of 26 items. And now if I refresh this, we're going to see that that field now has a value of 26. So hopefully you found that helpful. Thank you so much for watching, take care.